uh, are we under uh, the law for the Sabbath day? Turn to Colossians chapter 2 with me. And uh, you have to think about what's going on uh, with the gospel spreading. And uh, what happened? Boy, I've got too many parts here. Because I want you to see this, what happened. Uh, they have all these commands, by the way, and the Pharisees were the experts of these 613 commands. And they um, wrote a lot of insights. I mean, they, the Pharisees took the 613 commands and made a mountain out of them. And so they had all this legislation out of the 613, like about washing. You know, you had to wash, but, you know, your mom probably made you wash when you were little, but boy, they really believed in washing. They believed that you had to wash with your hands up, your elbows down, you had to pour water, the water had to drip down like this, it had to go this way, you had to wipe with a cloth immediately afterward and you couldn't touch anything. I mean, it was just, it was almost like going into surgery. So they went overboard on washings. They also went overboard on tithing. Um, then they went overboard on the Sabbath, and that's where we get the Sabbath day journey. So the church is born from literature all written by Jews. All the Bible is written by Jewish people, except for two little parts. Nebuchadnezzar, a Babylonian, wrote part, and he was not a Jew. And it's, you know, Luke was a proselyte to Judaism, but, but we don't believe that, you know, that Luke was, and he was writing along, but all the rest of the Bible is written by Jews. All the apostles were Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. So it was natural. The early church was born into this, you know, this maelstrom of Judaism, and it was hard for the people to separate the words of the Bible. Those 613 commands are really in God's word. But all this expansion on it, and this is called the Mishnah, uh, the Talmud, uh, these are commentaries, the Gemara. I don't even know how to spell Gemara. But all of this was their enlargement of all this. And boy, did they enlarge the Sabbath day. But do you remember what Jesus did? He was always messing up their system. He healed people on the Sabbath day. They didn't like that. He told the man that he healed to take up his mat and what? You could not carry a load on the Sabbath day. Where does it say that in the Bible? It said you're not supposed to, to do your customary work. You're supposed, to, you're supposed to set aside the day for the Lord. By the way, see how hard it is? The law, the Ten Commandments, Jesus said, love fulfills the whole law. Every one of the Ten Commandments is repeated in the New Testament except this one, the fourth. Isn't it interesting? All the others, either the apostles or Christ, repeat and, and kind of lay on us. Murder is wrong, coveting is wrong, lying is wrong, fornication and adultery are wrong, dishonoring God, etc., etc. But this one is not repeated. So for anybody that's told you you can't go out to eat on Sunday or buy gas or travel more than a Sabbath day's journey, it's okay for them to believe that, but it doesn't say that in the Bible. It was never, the Sabbath day was never placed on us. Now to Colossians 2, because people started becoming law detectors. And they were coming out of the Jerusalem church and they were going to all the little churches and they were going around and saying, you guys can't do that stuff. And so Paul starts talking to them. And, and what he says to them is, starting in verse 11, he says, in him you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In other words, there is a spiritual side to this circumcision because another thing they were really big on was all the laws about circumcision. And with that, they, I mean, you had to be circumcised on the eighth day if, if you had a male child and the mother was unclean for 40 days if she had a male child and 80 days if she had a female child and blah, 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 blah. And there was all this, and what he said is spiritual, what, what, what circumcision pictured is, is the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, and you're buried with him. And, and he talks about all that. 
and, and he, he keeps going through. Look at verse 14. He wiped out the handwriting requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he took out of the way, nailed it to the cross. And what he's saying is, all these 613, the law was a schoolmaster that was to bring us to Christ. Christos. I use an X as an abbreviation. To Christ. And so the law was not intended for people to go through their lives worrying uh, as to whether they had washed properly, circumcised on the right day, tithed enough. I mean, they were tithing their plants. They were going through the Pharisees and they'd count every tenth. Can you imagine going through your sunflowers and pulling out every tenth petal or whatever and, and taking it to the temple? And then this Sabbath thing got huge. So look what Paul does. He, he, he starts with talking to them about, about circumcision and then the whole body of ordinances that was against us, looking at all the ones we had broken uh, because the law was supposed to show us the law as a schoolmaster was to show us how completely unable we are to, to match up to God's righteousness. Uh, we all are lawbreakers in, in so many ways to bring us to Christ to realize that our only hope is not us living a perfect life, but that he lived it. But then look what Paul gets to. Keep reading down there. He nailed it to the cross. Uh, verse 15, I'm in Colossians 2.15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle, triumphed over them. So, here's verse 16, Hattie. You ought to mark this. It's answering you. Let no one judge you in food. I didn't even talk about that. Diet here. I mean, uh, you could not eat pork. You could not eat shellfish. You could not eat many types of, any, anything that scavenged. You know, shrimp eat all the waste at the bottom of, so do lobsters. Uh, my good Seventh-day Adventist friend and fellow student in the scripture, every time we'd go out to eat in Lansing at Bill Knapp's, when there used to be Bill Knapp's, when there used to be a good restaurant, I would always order, uh, you know, the shrimp basket. And he says, you're eating whale poopies. <laughs> because it was a scavenger. You know what I mean? They, they, they eat their bottom feeders. You know, it's carp and all that stuff. And so all these dietary laws were, were just on people. So, so he says, don't let anyone, verse 15, judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival. There were seven Jewish festivals. They were huge. Uh, Rosh Hashanah is coming up. The New Year is coming up. This is a very sobering time for Jewish people. If you're a Jewish person right now, you're supposed to... Uh, do all the, it's really an amazing, it's a very sober time for them. The, the new year is sober. And, and it's just, uh, but don't let anybody judge you in regard to festival or a new moon, here it is, or Sabbaths, which are shadows of things to come. The substance, verse 17, is of Christ. You know what Paul said in one verse just like that? We're not under the fourth commandment. In fact, we're not under any of the ceremonial law. The moral law never changes. The reason we know homosexuality is wrong is one of these 613 commands from God had to do with his character. And God says in Leviticus 18 that homosexuality is an abomination to me, to God. And if homosexuality is an abomination to an infinite, immutable, unchanging God 3,500 years ago, it's still. You understand that? Uh, the same thing goes for bestiality. The same thing goes for astrology, horoscopes, witchcraft. Those things are in the moral law, the character of God. This Sabbath day is not part of his moral law. It was his ceremonial law for his people. They were to be distinguished in the culture of Canaan and the world. Remember this morning, if you're here, I told you the Via Maris, last Sunday night I showed it to you, went from Africa, crossed right across Israel, went north of Israel and split to India and to Europe. The whole world, if you're shipping anything from Europe to Africa, it went through Israel. If you shipped anything from Africa to India, it went through Israel. It's, and if you shipped anything from India to Europe, it, it touched on the northern coast. So all three continents, 
Israel's the hinge. And they were supposed to be observing these laws to make them distinct and to show them through the sacrifices. Remember, Christ was portrayed in all the sacrifices, and every time they sinned, they had to go to the tabernacle or temple, and they had to trust a substitute. So the law was a schoolmaster that was pointing them toward a substitute. It was not a yoke that was to be put on the church. And so a Sabbath day's journey in the first century to the law keepers was, if you went further, God was going to judge you. To the Jews, it was their background. It'd be kind of like us saying, what's something that's real American? I don't know. Uh, you know, when you go overseas and you say, hey, we're going to celebrate Thanksgiving. They go, what? And you say, you don't have pilgrims? You know, you don't eat cranberry relish and pumpkin pie and eat a turkey? And they go, what are you talking about? See, that's American. A Sabbath day's journey was Jewish. It was ingrained in them from little childhood that you don't walk more than so many steps and you don't care anything on the Sabbath day. But that concept stayed with him. And by the way, and uh, Hattie didn't ask this, but did you know Paul never, never stopped celebrating the festivals? If you read the book of Acts, all the way through the book of Acts, Paul says, I've got to hurry. I hope to get to Jerusalem before Pentecost. I hope that I get to you before this feast. Of, and, and he's always, his mind is on the biblical calendar. But he never imposed it on anybody else. So what I would say is, if you really want to understand the Bible, you ought to do what our family did. For a year, we celebrated the Jewish feasts and read what they meant and when they happened and what they signified and what event happened. But you know what? We don't do it every year, and, and we don't think everybody else should. But it is the backdrop of the Bible, and Acts 1, verse 12 is because of that backdrop.